Shabbat Shalom, everyone. I am so glad that you could join me for this home worship video resource. As you can tell by the foliage behind me, I'm still in sunny South Florida, where I hosted three water immersion gatherings and water immersed 13 people. I'm working now on a possible fourth gathering in Crystal River over on the Gulf Coast side of the state. So if you are in Florida, if you live especially in that area and would like to get information about that possible gathering, then send me an email at info at triumphanttruth.global and we'll get right back with you and give you the details about that possible gathering. Now, when we finish up our ministry here in Florida, y'all willing, I'm gonna be going back to Texas for a very short season. And then y'all willing after that to New Mexico and Arizona. And so if you live in New Mexico or Arizona and would like to get information about possible gatherings in your state, then send me an email at info at triumphandtruth.global and I'll get right back with you and we can coordinate so that you can be informed about possible events in your state. Also, I wanted to tell you that I'm going to be working on getting you some behind the scenes footage. There's so much that goes on, so much ministry, so many exciting things that happen behind the scenes that you don't get to see unless I produce behind the scenes videos and put them out there for you. So I just want you to know that's on my heart. I want to get you drawn in closer where you can actually see what's going on and be a part of the ministry and the travel and all that we do behind the scenes. And so we're so glad that you've joined us. I especially want to welcome all of you who are watching for the first time. And it is time now to blast our shofars. So you may want to push pause and go get your shofar. And when we come back in the next segment, we will sound the alarm to Teshuvah together. Hallelujah. We always love quoting the Shema as we begin our gatherings. So we'll place the verses right up on your screen. We're going to begin with Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. And like every week, let's say it with real enthusiasm. Hear, Israel, Yah our Elohim, Yah is one, Echad. And you shall love Yah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your being and with all your might. And then we go to the second Shema found in Torah, which is Deuteronomy chapter 18, beginning with verse 18. Let's say it together. I shall raise up for them a prophet like you out of the midst of their brothers, and I shall put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And it shall be the man who does not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I require it of him. And then we go to Ezekiel chapter 36 beginning with verse 25, let's say it together. And I shall sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols, I cleanse you. And I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh, and I shall give you a heart of flesh and put my spirit within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my right rulings and you shall do them. Hallelujah. It's time to pray and intercede on behalf of the Jewish people in the land of Israel and really worldwide. We have a deep love and concern for the Jewish people and we wanna pray and ask the Father to open up their blind eyes to where they can see Yeshua. And we're asking the Father to move powerfully in the land of Israel and that many, many, many Jewish people 
will come to know Yeshua as Master and Mashiach of Israel. I want to invite you to stand up and face in the direction of the land of Israel. For me, it's this direction. And we're going to ask the Father's blessing to be upon the land and its people and upon our gatherings today. Let's pray. Father, we do love you so much and we are so very thankful that we can come together as your people on this set apart Shabbat day and worship you as creator and redeemer. We're so thankful for all the blessings that we receive on Shabbat, for the tremendous joy that we feel in our hearts, for the deep sense of Shalom and for the wonderful fellowship that we have with our brothers and sisters and the beautiful time that we spend together with you. We are facing the land of Israel. We know that your heart is there. We know that your eyes watch over that land continually. And our heart is there as well. And we are praying and asking you to move powerfully by your Ruach HaKodesh, by your set-apart spirit in the land of Israel. We are asking you as the Jewish people read through the scriptures that you would give them revelation and wisdom and understanding that they might see Yeshua in the scriptures and be convicted in their hearts and call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, which means the salvation of Yah. We're also praying for all of the citizens of the land of Israel and we're praying that you would empower those who have the testimony of Yeshua who live in the land, that they might go forth with a strong, bold, worry-free witness and proclaim Yeshua and Teshuvah throughout all the land. And we pray that many, many, many Jewish people and citizens of the land of Israel would come to know Yeshua as Master and Mashiach of Israel and be justified with a justification that leads to true obedience to Torah and all of Scripture. We're also praying for the ingathering of Ephraim from every nation under heaven. We are asking you to move powerfully by your Spirit in the nations. We are so blessed and thankful and humbled that you would use this ministry as you have, and we ask your continued blessing to be upon us. We pray that you would empower this ministry as we send out these videos each week, that you would anoint the videos, that you would inspire people to push play and watch the videos and listen to the message. And we pray for a deep conviction to come upon those who watch the videos, that they would call upon that one name by which we all must be saved, the name Yeshua, to be justified. And that justification then would lead to obedience to the Torah and all of Scripture. And so we look forward with great anticipation and eagerness to the mighty ingathering of beings that continues in the nations. We also pray for our gatherings today. And we ask that you would do what you can do in our midst, which is the supernatural. Heal the sick, lift the fallen, encourage the downcast. We pray that you would bless us as we worship you, that you would provide for us as we pray to you, and that you would transform us as we study your word. And we pray that everything that we do and say will bring great esteem to you. We also pray for this family of belief and for the mission that you have given me, that I have shared with your people to take this good news message of Yeshua and Teshuvah into every state of the United States, to be a witness to this nation. We're so thankful for all the scores of people who have gathered so far to receive the message, to be transformed, and the many, many, many people who have desired to be water immersed, to receive the circumcision of Messiah, to receive the I want to obey heart and the power to be obedient. And we are looking forward to the scores more of people who will gather, receive the message, be transformed, and receive the circumcision of Messiah. And so we pray today that our worship will be acceptable to you, 
that you will bless your people as we fellowship together with one another and with you. And may you be pleased with our worship. These things we ask in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. It's time for worship. So I want to take you over to 1 John chapter 2, and we're going to begin with verse 15. Let these words prepare your heart for worship. It says this, Do not love the world, nor that which is in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In other words, if you love the world, Love for the Father is not in you. You cannot love the world and the Father at the same time. You cannot serve two masters. Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And so if you love the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, then you're not loving the Father, you're loving the world. And the world passes away, and the lust of it. But the one doing the desire of Elohim remains forever. The one who is obedient to the commandments. That's the one who is truly loving Elohim. And that's the one who will remain forever. Yeshua said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He was simply quoting the Torah. And so obedience to the Torah, obedience to the commandments, that is the foundation of all praise and worship. If you don't have obedience to the commandments in your life, then your praise and your worship is just noise. Yah is not accepting your sacrifice. And so we must realize that to have an acceptable sacrifice, then we must be obedient to the commandments. When we obey the commandments, then we are loving Yah the way He wants to be loved through our obedience. And then our praise and our worship and our thanksgiving will be acceptable unto Him. Yah bless you as you bless Him in your worship. Love is kind Has no envy No pride Love believes Always hopes Is not seeking Its own Though I have The gift to speak And understand Love is patient, love is kind, has no envy, no pride. Love believes, and always hopes, is not seeking its own.
falling down my beard Running down my garments It's time for our prayer exhortation, and I want to take you over to a wonderfully encouraging passage of Scripture. This is Philippians chapter 4, beginning with verse 6. It says this, Do not worry at all. Now this is Scripture charging believers not to invest their life, their time, their thoughts into worry. We are not to worry at all. When you worry, you're investing your life, your thoughts, your emotions into believing that something bad may happen when really it may not happen at all. 
It's just a total waste of time to worry. Why not invest in trusting Elohim? Trust that he is who he said he is, that he will do what he said he will do. Believe that you're a covenant child and that Yah is going to take care of you. He's going to heal your sick body. He's going to fight your battles for you. He's going to provide for you. Invest in trust, not in worry. It says, do not worry at all, but in every matter, in every matter, there's nothing too small. There's nothing too large. Yah wants to have a continual conversation with you. He wants you to bring every matter of concern to Him. But in every matter, by prayer and petition, praying to Him, making requests to Him, with thanksgiving. And so we shouldn't let too much time go by without thanking the Father for what He's already done for us. Thanksgiving is a very important part of prayer. Let your requests be made known to Elohim. Who do you take your concerns to? The scripture says we ought to take our concerns to Elohim. We should make our requests known to Him, the one who has promised to take care of us. Notice, if we will pray and offer up petitions and be thankful develop an attitude of gratitude. We let our requests be made known to Elohim. Notice what happens. And the peace of Elohim. This is not talking about the peace of the world or the peace of man. This is talking about the peace of Elohim and the peace of Elohim, which surpasses all understanding. In other words, you can't get your mind around it. When you look around in certain trials and situations and it's so chaotic all around you, how is it that you have such peace? It's the peace of Elohim. It's peace that came to you because of prayer and thanksgiving. You can be at rest when all around you there is great turmoil. That's the peace of Elohim. And all the money in the world cannot buy the peace of Elohim. And that's what we need so desperately in the days that we're living in. We need to be at peace. We need to be at rest. We need to be walking in the shalom of Elohim. And that comes through prayer. And the peace of Elohim, which surpasses all understanding, notice, shall guard your hearts and minds through Messiah Yeshua. The peace of Elohim is like a soldier who mounts guard who guards over your heart and over your mind and enforces peace when your trial wants to bring turmoil, when people in your life want to bring a chaotic situation, when all around you it seems like the world is falling apart, but you have a guard, you have a soldier mounting guard, protecting your heart and your mind. And that guard, that soldier, is the peace of Elohim. And we need peace so desperately in the days that we're living in. And I want to encourage you, keep these thoughts in mind as you pray. And Yah bless you with His shalom as you pray. Hallelujah. Of the righteous 
If you have any questions, prayer requests, or need to speak with us, email us at info at triumphandtruth.global. You can also be reached by mail at Triumph and Truth, P.O. Box 470-602, Fort Worth, Texas 76147. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our Triumph and Truth YouTube channel and podcast on iTunes. Help us get the word out by sharing our videos, and leave a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Also, make sure to turn on notifications so you are alerted when we post something new. If you haven't already, download our phone app. Our app is loaded with messages, information on home groups, and events going on at Triumph and Truth. To download our app, search Triumph and Truth in the Google Play Store and Triumph Family in the App Store. Check out our Triumph and Truth radio where messages, music, and more play 24-7. Join us every day for worship time and on Shabbat for our home worship video resource. You can find the times of worship and when our home worship video resource plays on Shabbat on our website at www.triumphandtruth.global slash radio. Our new Triumph and Truth biblical calendar is now available on our website at www.triumphandtruth.global slash calendar. You can also find a link to the calendar on our phone app. Our message notes are made available weekly at triumphandtruth.global slash message notes. To help us set up a meeting in your state, contact us at info at triumphandtruth.global or call 972-626-7601. 
Triumph and Truth is now on Rumble, Parlor, and Gab. Head on over and subscribe or follow us and don't forget to turn on notifications so you are alerted when we post our powerful new content. Triumph and Truth is now on the Tarad Network. Head on over and like our page. Check out our worldwide prayer board on our website. You can view, comment, and pray for the needs listed and leave a prayer request as well. It's time for our giving exhortation, and I want to take you over to Genesis chapter 14, and we're going to begin with verse 18. It says this, And Malchizedek, sovereign of Shalem, brought out bread and wine. Now he was the priest of the Most High Ale, and he, Malchizedek, blessed him, Avram, and said, Blessed be Avram of the Most High Ale, possessor of the heavens and earth, and blessed be the Most High Ale, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he, Avram, gave him, Melchizedek, a tenth of all. And so we see right here, Avram, who is our example of belief, obedience, bringing a tenth part of the spoil that he had captured in the battle of the sovereigns to Melchizedek, who is a picture of Yeshua. So we have our example of belief obedience, bringing the tithe to the one who pictures Yeshua. And Avram is tithing before Moshe was even born. He's tithing before the Levitical priesthood was established. As a matter of fact, it's interesting, over in Hebrews chapter 7, in verse 9, it says, One might say that through Avraham, even Lewi, who received tithes, gave tithes, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. And so this is telling us that Lewi or Levi actually symbolically gave tithes to Melchizedek, who pictures Yeshua, because Levi was still in the loins of Avram when he brought the tithe. And so again, the tithe doesn't start with Moshe, the tithe doesn't start with the Torah. It continued in the Torah, but we see that our example of belief obedience, Avram, tithed before Moshe was born and before the Levitical priesthood had been established. The most mature place to be as a giver is to be a tither. The scripture says the tithe is Yah's and it is set apart. Yeshua even promoted the tithe in his teaching. He said these things should have been done without leaving the other things undone. And he was talking about tithing. And so the tithe is a place of maturity. When you grow, then you begin to realize that we are commanded in the Torah to bring in the tithe. Now you say, well, there are so many details about the tithe in the Torah. Well, let's simplify it. Let's bring to Yeshua what the Father has blessed us with. That's exactly what Avram did. The Father was the one who gave Avram victory in battle. And Avram brought a tenth part to Melchizedek, who was the priest of the Most High Ale. And so let's get back to our example of belief obedience. And when we're blessed, and we are, we're covenant children. And so we walk in the blessing. Then we bring that 10th part, that tithe to Yeshua. And how do we do that? We bring it to a local congregation that's doing the work. If you're a part of a local congregation, you bring your tithe there. If you're not a part of a local congregation, but you are a part of a ministry family, then you could bring your tithe into the ministry. 
If that ministry is doing the work, if that ministry is doing the work of Yeshua, if that ministry is going as triumphant truth is going from state to state, we are going into every state of the United States, and we are going into the nations of the world by video. And so if that ministry is doing the work, proclaiming the message, water immersing people, assisting people in the circumcision of Messiah where they receive the I want to obey heart and the power to be obedient. If they're doing that, then you should bring your tithe in to support that work. Again, tithing is the most mature place you can be as a giver. When we grow up in Elohim, we realize that we need to obey the tithing command and when we do that, we're providing needed resources so that the ministry can go forth in strength and power and accomplish the will of the Father in the earth in the matchless name of Yeshua. Yah bless you as you give. Well, are you ready to get into Yah's word today? I am as well. I want to invite you to open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 35. We're going to begin with verse 30 in just a moment. My message title today is Empowered to Build the New Covenant Dwelling Place of Yah. Let's get right into the verses. And Moshe said to the children of Israel, See, Yah has called by name Betzalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Yehudah, and he has filled him with the spirit of Elohim. This is very important. In wisdom, in understanding, and in knowledge, and in all work to make designs, to work in gold, and in silver, and in bronze, and in cutting of stones for setting, and in carving wood, and to work in all workmanship of design. And so this craftsman is filled with the spirit of Elohim in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all work. In other words, he's empowered to build the dwelling place of Yah in the wilderness. He's empowered by the Spirit of Elohim. Yah, by His Spirit, is giving this man all that he needs to be successful in doing the work, the work of building the dwelling place of Elohim in the wilderness. Verse 34, And he has put in his heart the ability to teach, the ability to teach others, to equip others, in him and Aholiab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Don. He has filled them with skill to do all work of the engraver and the designer and embroiderer in blue and in purple, in scarlet material and in fine linen and a weaver doing any work and makers of designs. And so these two men have been empowered by Elohim through his spirit to be able to accomplish the work of Elohim. So Elohim declared that he wanted a tabernacle or a dwelling place to be built in the wilderness so that he could dwell in the midst of his people. And he empowered these two craftsmen through his spirit to have all wisdom and knowledge and understanding to be able to do the work. And this is a Torah picture that points forward into the new covenant when Yah empowers believers by His Spirit, to do the work of building the new covenant dwelling place. Now, we're going to get to that in just a moment. Go with me over to Exodus chapter 36, and we'll begin with verse 1. It says, 
and Betzal El, and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whom Yah has given wisdom and understanding. And by the way, there are some verses that talk about wise-hearted women as well. To know how to do all work for the service of the set-apart place shall do according to all that Yah has commanded. And Moshe called Betzalel and Aholiab, and every wise-hearted man in whose heart Yah had given wisdom, so it's Yah giving the wisdom, everyone whose heart lifted him up to come and to do the work. And then let's look at Exodus chapter 39. We'll begin with verse 42. It says, according to all that Yah had commanded Moshe, so the children of Israel did all the work. So they were empowered to do the work and they accomplished the work. Verse 43, and Moshe looked over all the work and saw they did it as Yah had commanded. So they had done and Moshe blessed them. Exodus chapter 40, beginning with verse 33. And he raised up the courtyard all around the dwelling place and the slaughter place and placed the covering of the courtyard gate. And Moshe completed the work and the cloud covered the tent of appointment and the esteem of Yah filled the dwelling place and Moshe was not able to come into the tent of appointment because the cloud dwelt on it and the esteem of Yah filled the dwelling place. So Yah had commanded that Moshe speak to the people to build a dwelling place for him. He wanted to dwell in their midst and Yah empowered these craftsmen. He gave them all that they needed to be successful in accomplishing the work. And when they had done it, just as Yah had commanded, then the esteem of Yah filled the dwelling place. Hallelujah. Now, I want to take it over into the New Covenant and look at some verses that speak of the New Covenant dwelling place of Yah. As I mentioned a moment ago, the Torah example points forward into the new covenant. And so there is a new covenant dwelling place of Yah that the scripture speaks of. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We'll begin with verse 19. It says this, Or do you not know that your body, the body of the believer, is the dwelling place of the set-apart spirit which is in you. So we have the promise of the Father. The promise of the Father is the promise that Yah made to Abraham and to Abraham's capital S seed, the Messiah, that through Abraham's example of belief obedience and through the redemptive work of Messiah, that every believer in Yeshua can pray to the Father and ask to be filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah. Yah will fill every believer with His Spirit. And with the infilling of the Spirit comes special powers, special ability, special wisdom, and special knowledge, just like in the Torah example. We also see the corporate body of Mashiach. Go with me over to Ephesians chapter 2 and we'll pick up with verse 19. It says, So then you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens of the set-apart ones and members of the household of Elohim. So those believing upon Yeshua from the nations who were far off, they are no longer strangers, they are no longer foreigners, but they have become fellow citizens of the set-apart ones. In other words, members of the tree of believing Israel, they've been grafted in. They're members of the household of belief, it says. Verse 20, having been built upon the foundation 
of the emissaries and prophets. In other words, the foundation that the emissaries and prophets have built, the foundation that they have preached. We're not built upon emissaries and prophets. We're built upon the foundation that they laid. And who is that foundation? It says, Yeshua Messiah himself being chief cornerstone in whom all the building, this is the new covenant dwelling place of Yah, all the building, being joined together, grows into a set-apart dwelling place in Yah. We're talking about stone upon stone. We're talking about believer upon believer, coming together, unified. And believer upon believer, stone upon stone, creates this wonderful dwelling place in Yah. It's a new covenant dwelling place of Yah. Look at verse 22. In whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of Elohim in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And then go with me over to 1 Peter chapter 2, and we'll pick up with verse 4. It says, drawing near to Him, drawing near to Yeshua, a living stone. Yeshua is a living stone. He's the chief cornerstone of this wonderful new covenant dwelling place. Rejected indeed by men, but chosen by Elohim and precious. You also, you believers, you also as living stones, you are living stones as well, are being built up, built together. What are you being built into? A spiritual house, a new covenant dwelling place, a set-apart priesthood to offer up spiritual slaughter offerings acceptable to Elohim through Yeshua Messiah. Now, go with me over to Luke chapter 3, and we'll pick up with verse 21. And this is going to tell us that Yeshua was empowered by the Spirit of Yah to build the new covenant dwelling place of Elohim. Let's take a look. And it came to be when all the people were immersed, so the people were being water baptized, Yeshua also being immersed, Yeshua was also water baptized, and praying. So when he came up out of the water, he began to pray. The heaven was opened, and the set-apart spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. People say, well, what did he pray for? Well, he prayed for what he received. He prayed to be filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah. So Yeshua was water baptized. He was immersed, not because of sin, but to fulfill all righteousness. It was the right thing to do. When he came up out of the water, he began to pray to receive the set-apart spirit of Yah. And the scripture says, Yah poured out his spirit upon Yeshua. It says, and the set-apart spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son, the beloved. In you, I did delight. And so Yeshua received the set-apart spirit of Yah. Yah poured out his spirit to empower Yeshua, to give him wisdom and knowledge and special ability to be able to do the work of Elohim, the work that Yeshua was called to by the Father. Yeshua received the power, the ability to complete the work of Yah. Look at Luke chapter 4. We'll begin with verse 1. It says, And Yeshua being filled with the set-apart spirit, the spirit of the Father, the spirit of Yah, returned from the Yarden and was led by the spirit into the wilderness, being tried for 40 days by the devil. And so after Yah poured out his spirit upon Yeshua, the scripture says Yeshua was filled with the spirit and he was led by the spirit, the spirit of Yah. Yah led Yeshua by his spirit into the wilderness 
to be tried. And he was tried for 40 days by the devil. Now, he overcame in every trial by quoting the Torah. And that ought to tell us something. There's devil defeating power in the Torah. If you abolish the Torah, you abolish your power. I hope religion is listening. Luke chapter 4 and verse 13, it says, And when the devil had ended every trial, he went away from him until a convenient time, and Yeshua returned in the power, in the ability of the Spirit, the Spirit of Yah, to Galil, to the Galilee. And news of him went out through all the surrounding country, and he was teaching in their congregations, being praised by all, and he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and according to his practice, he went into the congregation on the Sabbath day. Yeshua was a Sabbath keeper, obviously. He obeyed the Bible and stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Yeshayahu was handed to him, and having unrolled the scroll, he found the place where it was written, this is very important, verse 18, the Spirit of Yah is upon me. I have received the indwelling, set-apart Spirit of Yah. The Spirit of Yah is upon me because He has anointed me. He has anointed me with purpose. He's given me special ability, wisdom, and knowledge to be able to accomplish the work of Elohim. Because he has anointed me with purpose, here it is, to bring the good news to the poor. To preach the good news to the poor. The poor in spirit. Those who have not believed yet. He was anointed to proclaim, to declare, to preach, to prophesy the good news, to bring salvation to those who were lost and apart from the truth. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Yeshua is saying, I've come and I've been anointed by Yah. His spirit is upon me and I've come to heal what is broken. I've come to do damage to the devil's kingdom, to destroy the kingdom of darkness. I've come to heal what has been broken. To proclaim release to the captives. To set the captives free. Hallelujah. And recovery of sight to the blind. That means to heal the sick. So Yeshua understands why he's been anointed. Why has the Spirit of Yah come upon him? Yah has anointed him with purpose to do the work of Elohim. And he is speaking forth his purpose here to send away crushed ones with a release to proclaim the acceptable year of Yah. That's the year of Jubilee. That's the year when everything that you've lost or from a new covenant perspective has been stolen from you by the devil is restored to you. Hallelujah. And having rolled up the scroll, he gave it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the congregation were fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, today, this scripture has been filled in your hearing. In other words, he was announcing his anointing. He understood why he was empowered by Yah through his spirit. And that is to be able to build the new covenant dwelling place of Yah. Now, let's look at Luke chapter 4, starting with verse 31. It says, And he came down to Kephar Nehu, a city of Galil, and was teaching them on the Sabbaths. And they were astonished at his teaching. Well, he's been anointed. 
He has the Spirit of Yah upon him to proclaim the good news to the poor in spirit. Hallelujah. So he is fulfilling his purpose, his calling. He's doing the work of Elohim here. They were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. And in the congregation was a man having a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice saying, Ha! What have we to do with you, Yeshua of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know you, who you are, the set-apart one of Elohim. And Yeshua rebuked him saying, Be silenced and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him without hurting him. And astonishment came on all, and they spoke to each other, saying, What is this word that with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out? He's anointed, he's been empowered. He's received special ability and knowledge and understanding. He's walking in authority. He's received the Spirit of Yah enabling him to build the new covenant dwelling place of Elohim. And the report about him went out into every place of the neighborhood and rising up from the congregation, he went into the house of Shimon. But the mother-in-law of Shimon was sick with a severe inflammation. And they asked him concerning her. And standing over her, he rebuked the inflammation. And it left her. And instantly rising up, she served them. He's doing the work of Elohim. And when the sun was setting, all who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hands on each one of them and healed them. And also demons were coming out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Messiah, the son of Elohim, and rebuking them. He did not allow them to speak for they knew that he was the Messiah. And when day came, he went out and proceeded to a lonely place to pray. But the crowds were seeking him and came to him and tried to keep him from leaving them. And he said to them, to the other cities, I also have to bring the good news, the reign of Elohim. Because for this I have been sent. He was laser beam focused. He knew what he was called to do. He knew the work that he was called to accomplish. And he was set like a flint to accomplishing the work that Yah had given him. Look at John chapter 9 and we'll pick up with verse 4. Yeshua said this, It is necessary for me to work the works of him who sent me while it is day. He's saying it is necessary. I'm compelled to do the work of the one who sent me. He goes on to say, Night is coming when no one is able to work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now anyone who is anointed, who has received the indwelling set-apart spirit of Yah and understands his calling, any person who is focused on the work that Yah has given him to do and is doing it, that person becomes a light to a dark world. Look at John chapter 17. Starting with verse 1, it says, Yeshua said these words and lifted up his eyes to the heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Esteem your son so that your son also might esteem you. 
as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give everlasting life to all whom you have given him. And this is everlasting life, that they should know you, the only true Elohim. So the Father is the only true Elohim. And Yeshua Messiah, whom you have sent, I have esteemed you on the earth, having accomplished, here it is, having accomplished the work you have given me that I should do. Do you know the work that he's given you to do? Have you prayed to be filled with the spirit of Yah? To have special abilities and wisdom and knowledge? to accomplish the work that he's given you to do? Have you even thought about the fact that he has a plan for every believer? That he has something for you to do? And he is going to enable you and empower you to build the new covenant dwelling place of Yah. Let's look at John chapter 19, beginning with verse 28. After this, Yeshua, knowing that all had been accomplished. In other words, he accomplished all the work that Yah had given him to do. In order that the scripture might be accomplished, said, I thirst. A bowl of sour wine stood there, and they filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on hyssop, and held it to his mouth. So when Yeshua took the sour wine, he said, It has been accomplished. Your Bible may say it is finished. What is finished? What has been accomplished? The work that Yah gave Yeshua to do. Yeshua was work focused. He was purpose focused. He knew he was to do something, to accomplish something. That Elohim had a purpose for his life. And just before he gave up his spirit and died on the tree, he said, it has been accomplished or it is finished. The work that he was to do, he accomplished. And bowing his head, he gave up his spirit and he died. Well, Yeshua makes a very powerful statement concerning believers in John chapter 14, beginning with verse 11. He tells us here that believers are empowered to build the new covenant dwelling place of Yah, the very work that Yeshua did and accomplished. Yeshua says, you're going to do the same work. Let's look at it. Believe me that I am in the Father. And the Father in me. This is Yeshua speaking. Otherwise, believe me because of the works themselves. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. The Father is, is in him by his spirit because he received the indwelling set apart spirit of Yah. He says, otherwise, believe me because of the works themselves. Because of the special ability that I've received from Yah by His Spirit. The wisdom that you hear when you listen to my words, the knowledge, the authority that I walk in, all of these things come from the Father by His Spirit, through His Spirit. Verse 12, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, here it is, the works that I do, he shall do also. We have the same purpose. As a believer, you have the same purpose, in essence, that Yeshua did, to build up the new covenant dwelling place of Yah. Now, Yeshua had a very unique purpose in that he was the Lamb of Elohim who takes away the sin of the world, and he died on the tree for us. 
But the overall general purpose of Yeshua's life was to build the new covenant dwelling place of Yah. And we have the same purpose, every believer. And wonderfully, we have the same power by the same spirit. If we'll understand these things that I'm teaching today. Yeshua said, truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he shall do also. I pray that you get that in your heart today. And greater works than these he shall do because I go to my father. Well, not greater in quality, but greater in quantity. My ministry has been over a span of 30 years. I've had a ministry about the length of Yeshua's entire life. Yeshua's ministry was relatively short. But we are going to do greater works in quantity because we can have a longer ministry, y'all willing. Verse 13, And whatever you ask in my name, that I shall do, in order that the Father might be esteemed in the Son. If you ask whatever in my name, I shall do it. If you love me, you shall guard my commands. You shall obey my commands. And I shall ask the Father, and he shall give you another helper. Another helper. Yeshua was the original helper, but there's going to be another helper. To stay with you forever, the spirit of the truth, which the world is unable to receive because it does not see it or know it. Talking about the spirit of the Father, Yah's spirit. But you know it, for it stays with you and shall be in you. That's how you're going to do the works of Yeshua. Because you're going to receive the Spirit of the Father, the Spirit of truth. And the Father is going to give to you special ability, wisdom, knowledge. And you're going to do the work of Elohim. That's the promise that Yeshua is making here. And it's a wonderful promise. So let's go back over to Luke chapter 4 and pick up with verse 18. And this is simply a quote of Isaiah 61, verses 1 and 2. We've already read this, but I want you to apply it to yourself. I want you to say the same thing that Yeshua said. The Spirit of Yah is upon me. Can you say that? Have you prayed and asked the Father to anoint you with His Spirit? Can you say the Spirit of Yah is upon me and personalize it? You should. If you've prayed and asked for His Spirit, He'll give you His Spirit because He has anointed me. Here comes the purpose. To bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim, to declare, to preach the good news of Yeshua and redemption to the poor in spirit. For He has sent me. Do you feel sent? He has sent me with purpose to heal the brokenhearted to heal what is broken, to destroy the works of the devil. Hallelujah. To proclaim release to the captives, to set the captives free, to cast out demons. Hallelujah. And recovery of sight to the blind, to heal the sick. These are things that Yeshua said you can do when you receive the Father's Spirit to send away crushed ones with a release, to proclaim the acceptable year of Yah. Jubilee comes to every person who believes upon Yeshua and the things that they've lost, the things that have been stolen from them by the devil will be restored to them when they believe upon Yeshua, when they receive the indwelling set-apart spirit of the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah they begin to walk in victory. What a wonderful promise that Yeshua has made that we'll do His works. Now go with me over to Acts chapter 2 and we'll begin with verse 1. And we'll talk here a bit about how the early congregation of belief received the indwelling set-apart spirit of Yah. 
It says, And when the day of the festival of Shavuot had come, they were all with one mind in one place, and suddenly there came a sound from the heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and settled on each one of them. And they were all filled with the set-apart spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them to speak. They were speaking languages of men that they had never learned. And so we can already see that they've received special ability to proclaim the good news to those who are poor in spirit. And we will see other examples of casting out demons and healing the sick and so on. They're doing the very works of Yeshua. What are they doing? They are building up the new covenant dwelling place of Elohim. Hallelujah. Look at Acts chapter 5. We'll read verse 12, the first part of it. And through the hands of the emissaries, many signs and wonders were done among the people. So now we're seeing signs and wonders being done because they're filled with the Spirit of Yah. Look at Acts chapter 5, verse 14. And more believers were added to the Master, large numbers of both men and women. So the new covenant dwelling place of Yah is being built up and people are being added. It says large numbers of both men and women, verse 15, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Kepha passing by might fall on some of them. This is special power and ability from Yah for healing. Verse 16, a large number also gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick ones and those who were troubled by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. The sick were healed. Those who were troubled by unclean spirits were delivered. The demons were cast out. Now, the early congregation of belief is doing the works of Yeshua building up the dwelling place of Yah. So here's an example of the ministry being turned over to the people. All right, so in those early chapters of the book of Acts, we see that the emissaries were doing most of the work. They were doing the preaching. They were doing the praying. They were doing the miracles of healing. They were casting out demons. But we see in Acts chapter 6 that there is a turning over of, a releasing of the works of Yeshua to the people. And something remarkable happens when the people start doing the works of Yeshua. Acts chapter 6 and verse 1, And in those days when the taught ones were increasing, Again, the body of believers was increasing. There arose a grumbling against the Hebrews, the Hebrew-speaking believers, by the Hellenists, the Greek-speaking believers, because their widows were overlooked in the daily serving. So the Hellenists were complaining that their widows weren't being fed. They were overlooked in the daily serving. So the 12, the 12 emissaries, summoned the group of the taught ones and said, brought the congregation together, and said, it is not pleasing for us to leave the word of Elohim and serve tables. So it's not pleasing to us that we're having to give so much of our time in serving tables. Therefore, brothers... Seek out from among you seven men who are known to be filled with the set-apart spirit. See, that's the prerequisite. That they are filled with the set-apart spirit. It says, and wisdom. Wisdom that comes from Yah through His Spirit, whom we shall appoint for this duty, this duty of serving tables, of feeding widows and the like. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer 
and to serving the word and to the preaching of the word. And the word pleased the entire group, the entire congregation was pleased with this, that the ministry was being turned over or transferred to the people. And they chose Stephanos, a man filled with belief and the set-apart spirit. Again, that is the prerequisite for a believer to do the works of Yeshua, to do the work of Elohim, to build up the dwelling place of Elohim. We're talking about from a new covenant perspective here. The believer has to be filled with the set-apart spirit of Yah. And then you could go on and read the names of the others there. Look at verse 6. Whom they set before the emissaries. So they brought this team of seven together, set them before the emissaries. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them and the word of Elohim spread. They laid hands on them, prayed for them, and the ministry was transferred, turned over to these men who were filled with belief and with the set-apart spirit. And notice verse 7, And the word of Elohim spread, and the number of the taught ones increased greatly in Jerusalem. See, how did that happen? That happened when the common people, that happened when believers, not the emissaries, but just the common people received the ministry. When the common believer received the ministry, then notice what happened. The word of Elohim spread. And the number of the taught ones increased greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the belief. And Stephanos, filled with belief and power, that special ability, did great wonders and signs among the people. We know also that Philippe did great wonders and signs among the people as well. Yeshua said, the works that I do, you shall do, and greater works than these, because I go to my Father. And when Yeshua went to his Father, what happened after that? The Spirit of the Father was released upon believers. Hallelujah. Now, go with me over to Ephesians chapter 4. We'll start with verse 1 in just a moment. And this is going to tell us that special offices were given to train the people to do the work of the ministry. This is so wonderful, so powerful. It says, I call upon you, therefore, I, the prisoner of the master, this is Shaul speaking, to walk worthily of the calling with which you were called, with all humility and meekness, with patience, bearing with one another in Love. So walk worthily of the calling, of the purpose with which you were called. And you have to be humble. You can't start thinking that the work that you're doing, empowered by Yah through His Spirit, is something that you're doing in and of yourself, that it comes from you. You have to be humble and walk in meekness. With patience, it says, bearing with one another in love, being eager to guard the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. One body and one Spirit, as you also were called in one expectation of your calling, one master, one belief, one immersion, one Elohim, and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all by His Spirit. But to each one of us, favor was given according to the measure of the gift of Messiah. So Messiah has given believers gifts. 
This is beautiful. That is why it says, when he went up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. But what does he went up mean, except that he also first went down into the lower parts of the earth. So he died and was buried and went into the lower parts of the earth. But he was raised from the dead and ascended to the Father. And the Father's Spirit came. And Messiah gave gifts to men. In other words, special callings, special offices. Let's take a look at it here. Verse 10. He who went down is also the one who went up far above all the heavens to fill all. Verse 11, here it is. And he himself, Yeshua Messiah, gave some as emissaries. Your Bible may say apostles. And some as prophets. And some as evangelists. And some as shepherds and teachers. Here's the purpose that these special callings were given, these special offices of ministry. Verse 12, for the perfecting of the set apart ones, for the teaching and the training of believers, for the preparation of believers to do the work of Elohim, to do the work of the ministry, It says, to the work of service, to a building up of the body of the Messiah. In other words, building up the new covenant dwelling place of Yah. Every believer has that calling. We have different aspects, different giftings, but we're all called to build up the new covenant dwelling place of Elohim. Verse 13, until we all come to the unity of the belief and of the knowledge of the Son of Elohim, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the completeness of Messiah. So we're going to have to work and we're going to have to build until all of these things come to pass. Verse 14, so that we should no longer be children, tossed and borne about by every wind of teaching, by the trickery of men, in cleverness unto the craftiness of leading astray, but maintaining the truth in love, we grow up in all respects into him who is the head, Messiah, from whom the entire body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies. Every believer must do his or her part in building up the new covenant dwelling place of Elohim, according to the working by which each part does its share, causes growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. This is so powerful and so wonderful. Now go with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll begin with verse 7. And this is going to tell us that spiritual gifts are given as tools to build the new covenant dwelling place of Yah. And every believer filled by Yah with his spirit has these tools in his or her tool belt. It says, and to each one is given the manifestation of the spirit for Profiting, So every believer has the potential of receiving these tools for the benefit of others. For to one is given a word of wisdom through the Spirit. The word of wisdom is receiving a word about something that is going to take place in the future. And to another, a word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. The word of knowledge is something spoken to you by Yah through His Spirit, that you would have never have known except that Yah spoke it to you. Verse 9, And to another, belief by the same Spirit. This is unwavering belief. You have that 
by Yah through his spirit. And to another gifts of healing by the same spirit. You receive the ability to bring about healing in a person who is infirmed. It is Yah doing the work through his spirit, through your life and ministry. Verse 10, and to another operations of powers, your Bible may say workings of miracles, and to another prophecy to proclaim the word of Yah, and to another discerning of spirits to understand and know what type of spirit is in operation, and to another kinds of tongues, whether it be the tongues of men or the tongues of messengers, and to another interpretation of tongues, being able to take an unknown tongue and interpret it into the language of the people. Verse 11, but one and the same Spirit works all these, distributing to each one individually as it intends. It says, but one and the same Spirit works all these, distributing or making available or giving to each one, each believer, individually as it intends. Now, go with me over to Matthew chapter 25, and we'll start with verse 14 in just a moment. And I want to say this to you, and I pray that you really hear me. To hear the master say, well done. I believe we all want to hear the master say, well done. We must do the work that we are called to well. Let me say that again. To hear the master say, well done, we must do the work that we are called to well. Let's begin here with Matthew 25, verse 14. For it is like a man going from home who called his own servants and delivered his possessions to them. And to one he gave five talents and to another two and to another one. To each according to his own ability. And he went from home. So he gave the man who had a five talent ability, five talents. He gave the man who had a two talent ability, two talents. And he gave the man who had a one talent ability, one talent. So he was not unfair in his expectation. Because he gave the talents according to their abilities. Verse 16, and he who had received the five talents went and worked with them and made another five talents. In the same way, he with the two also, he gained two more. But he who had received the one went away and dug in the ground and hid the silver of his master. And after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. See, I have gained five more talents beside them. And his master said to him, well done, good and trustworthy servant. You were trustworthy over a little. I shall set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. That's what we want to hear him say. Well done, good and trustworthy servant. Verse 22. Then he who had received two talents came and said, Master, you delivered to me two talents. See, I have gained two more talents besides them. His master said to him, well done. He received the same praise. Well done, good and trustworthy servant. You were trustworthy over a little. I shall set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 24. And the one who had received the one talent also came and said, master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed and being afraid 
I went and hid your talent in the ground. I wonder how many of us hid our talent. I wonder how many of us have gotten so focused on the cares of life or we've gotten so focused on thinking that we have so much knowledge because we've read so much of the Bible, but we're not doing anything. Yeshua is going to return and we're going to have to give an account concerning what we did in the flesh. Did we accomplish the work that we were given to do? And some of us may have never even asked, what work do you have for me? What unique task have you assigned to me? And that's what this message is about. We need to be about the work of the master. We need to receive the anointing of the spirit of Yah. We need to realize that we've been empowered by Yah with special abilities, that we have gifts and tools, that some of us have been called to special offices, and we're charged to train up believers to be able to do the work of Elohim, the work of building up the new covenant dwelling place of Yah in the earth. And yet we've gotten distracted. And we're not doing the work. That's what this message is all about, to encourage each one of us to rise up, to be empowered by Yah, to understand the work that we're called to do and to get busy. You might not be able to go like we're going to go from state to state and proclaim the good news of Yeshua and his Torah lifestyle and Teshuvah. But you can connect with this ministry and you can pray for this ministry and you can give and support this ministry and you can proclaim the good news of Yeshua right there where you are in your world. We all have a sphere of influence that we can reach. And so each one of us are called to do work for Elohim. And the judgment that we will have to give an account in is concerning the work. Did we do what we were called to do? Verse 25, And being afraid, I went and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. And his master answering said to him, You wicked and lazy servant. My concern is that Many of us have fallen into apathy and lethargy and we've become more lazy than anything else. We might have good intentions, but we're just not doing the work. We don't want to hear Yeshua say, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. Then you should have put my silver with the bankers, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. The least you could have done would have been to invest it with the bankers so that I could receive back my own with interest. Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to him who possesses 10 talents. For to everyone who possesses, the one who's busy with the work, more shall be given. And he shall have overflowingly. But from him who does not possess, even what he possesses shall be taken away. It doesn't matter how much you know. A lot of people read their Bible a lot and they have a lot of facts in their head, but they're not doing the work. You're not going to be judged based on what you know when in all actuality, you're apathetic, lethargic, lazy. I'm speaking the truth in love because I want to stir your heart to get busy. In other words, to do the work of Elohim because we're going to have to give an account 
concerning what we did in the flesh. Will you be able to say, will I be able to say when I stand before Yeshua, it has been accomplished, just like he did. That's my desire. I want to hear him say, well done, good and trustworthy servant. Hallelujah. Verse 30, and throw the worthless servant out into the outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now go with me over to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and we'll read verse 10. And this is going to tell us what I've been saying that we all must give an account for our work. It says, for we all have to appear before the judgment seat of Messiah in order for each one to receive according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. I've heard it taught by religion that believers don't have to be concerned about the judgment, that there will be no judgment for believers. That is just not biblically sound. That is not true. This passage tells us that we all, every believer, have to appear before the judgment seat of Messiah in order for each one to receive according to what he has done in the body, to what you have done. It's according to the work that you were called to do. Did you do it? Whether good, you were a good servant, you were trustworthy, or evil. You were evil, wicked, and lazy. Romans chapter 14 says this, But why do you judge your brother, or why do you despise your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Messiah. For it has been written, As I live, says Yah, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to Elohim. That's a quote of Isaiah 45, 23. Each one of us, therefore, shall give account of himself to Elohim. Did you do the work that you were called to do? I have a couple more verses that I want to leave you with to encourage you. Go with me over to Mark chapter 16. We'll start with verse 15. And this is going to tell us that we're not alone. That the master is going to work with us. Hallelujah. It says, and he said to them, this is Yeshua speaking, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. Because you're anointed by Yah through His Spirit, to preach the good news to the poor. And Yeshua is saying, understand that when you pray to the Father and ask to receive His Spirit, that He will pour out His Spirit on you and empower you. Give you what's necessary to be successful in the work of building up the new covenant dwelling place of Elohim. And the first thing that he's going to do is empower you to proclaim. Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to every creature. He who has believed and has been immersed shall be saved, but he who has not believed shall be condemned. Look at verse 20. And they went out and proclaimed it everywhere while the master worked with them and confirmed the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. The master worked with them and he'll work with us. Hallelujah. We are not alone. But I wanted to use this message to stir your heart, to get you to understand that it's more than just Attaining knowledge, reading and studying and learning more and knowing more. 
That's not a bad thing. We are to study to show ourselves approved. A workman who can rightly divide the word of truth. But we must do more than just attain knowledge. We must do the work. We must pray and ask, what is that special assignment that you have for me that's specific to my life? We must receive the empowerment of Yah through His Spirit to have special abilities and knowledge and wisdom. Maybe even to come to that place where we realize we're called to a special office, an emissary, a prophet, an evangelist, a shepherd, a teacher, with the purpose of training up believers. That every believer has a ministry, has a work of service. That we are to do the works of Yeshua. And he led the way and showed us an example of one who understood he was anointed by the Father. And that he went forth to accomplish the work of building up the new covenant dwelling place of Yah. And Yeshua said, follow me. Follow me in my work. Follow me in this work of service. Do what I did. Receive the same empowerment. And remember, as you go forth to do the work, that I am going with you. And I am working alongside of you. And you will be able to say, I have accomplished the work, or it is finished. Hallelujah. After watching this video, you may have been convicted in your heart, and you're asking yourself the question, what must I do to be saved? Well, the Bible tells us that there are some things that we must do to be saved. And so I want to give you seven things according to scripture that we must be willing to do to walk the path to salvation. The first thing is we must believe with all of our hearts that Yeshua Messiah is the son of the living Elohim, that he died on the tree for our sins, that he was buried and raised from the dead. And then we must perform teshuvah. The word teshuvah is a Hebrew word that means to turn to the master in obedience. It's not just enough to say, I'm sorry for what I did in the past. I'm sorry for my sins. But instead, you leave behind your lifestyle of sin and you embrace the word of Yah and you have a willingness and a desire then to be obedient to the commandments. And then thirdly, you must submit yourself to water immersion. When you're immersed in water, the Bible says that you are buried with Yeshua Messiah and you are raised to walk in newness of life. The scripture says that old lifestyle of sin is cut away from your life. And it's the place where the circumcision of Messiah takes place. That's the circumcision of the heart. And you receive the want to heart. In other words, you want to obey. And then that leads us to number four. You also receive the power to be obedient. And how do you do that? You pray to be filled with the set apart spirit of Yah. And so when you're filled with the spirit of Yah or you're immersed in the spirit of Yah, not only are you given the power to be successful within the context of the covenant and to love Yah the way Yah wants to be loved through obedience, but you're also empowered. You're given gifts of the Spirit. You're empowered by Yah to be useful for the reign of Elohim and to go out and to receive that harvest of humanity that Yeshua has charged all of his followers to go out and receive. And then we need to read our Bibles regularly and pray continually. The scripture says the word of Yah is like milk for a baby. And so if you're just coming to belief, it's like you're a little infant in your belief and you need to grow. How are you going to grow? You need to eat. 
And what do you eat? You eat the Word. It's like milk for a baby. So eat regularly in the Word and pray continually, the Scripture says. Isn't it wonderful that you have a relationship with the Father and now you can have an ongoing conversation with the Father? That's a beautiful thing. And then number six, you need to find a local fellowship that you can engage with. If you can't find a local fellowship, then get connected with a ministry that's blessing you and then stay connected. And then number seven, the scripture says, he who endures to the end shall be saved. What that tells us is that salvation is not just a moment. It's not just a prayer, but instead it's a life. And so you have to live this life of walking in the will of the Father, walking in His ways, following after Yeshua and His example of obedience, loving the Word, obeying the commandments, praying, and being filled with the Spirit of Yah, being led by the Spirit of Yah. And if you'll do that throughout your life, the Scripture says when you get to the end of your life, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, once you start, don't quit. Don't give out. Don't give in. Don't back up. Continue in this walk. And if you'll do it and not stop, then at the end of your life or when Yeshua returns, you will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, if you are ready to make a commitment to these things, then why don't you send us an email at info at triumphandtruth.global and we're going to respond right back to you and we're going to celebrate with you the fact that you have believed upon Yeshua and you're ready to walk in Yeshua's example of obedience, walk in a lifestyle that pleases the Master, and we want to encourage you in it. And so send us an email. We want to celebrate with you. If you endure to the end, the Scripture says, you will be saved. Hallelujah. It's always such a joy to be able to come through these cameras each week and provide this home worship video resource. And it's my prayer that you have been tremendously blessed. As we close out this video, I want to leave you with a spoken blessing over your life. So why don't you stand up where you are and just lift up your hands and begin to worship as I speak these words of blessing over you. Y'all bless you and guard you. Y'all make his face shine upon you and show favor to you. Yah lift up his face upon you and give you shalom. In the matchless name of Yeshua, amen and amen.